In the previous episodes, we explored so many security features, which are available out of the box in Blazorplate's environment. One of those features is the permission-based authorization which enables the system admin to grant specific permissions to roles and users and revoke permissions from them. Permissions in Blazorplate are generated automatically during application startup and cannot be altered at runtime for security reasons. The Blazorplate development team devised a revolutionary method of scanning the system for all potential permissions during application startup and authorizing users dynamically based on the permissions granted to them. This new method is called Dynamic Authorization. Dynamic Authorization method makes the authorization process more dynamic and easy to manage as you don't need to hard coding the permissions and roles in your web API project. Instead, you can use the predefined permissions which have been generated during the application startup to define new authorization policies on the fly, the same way I did in the previous episodes. In this episode, I will show you a practical example of how to use the dynamic authorization technique in the Blazorplay development environment. First, let's take a look at the permissions related to the applicant's module, which is the same module that I used in the previous episode to evaluate some authorization policies. These permissions are used to add access restrictions on the create, retrieve, update, and delete operations, for instance, a user cannot delete an applicant profile without having the delete permission. These operations take place in the applicant's API controller, which contains a set of action methods. Now I'm going to show you how the dynamic authorization method works in the Blazorplate development environment. I'm going to use the applicant API controller as a case study to examine this method. As we can see, this controller is already decorated with BP authorize attribute. This attribute has two functions. First, it allows for generating the permissions based on the API controller actions. Second, it dynamically authenticates and authorizes the incoming requests for the protected resource. Now let's see the impact of removing this attribute. After saving the change, Visual Studio will automatically compile the Web API project using the hot reload feature. Now we have our Web API project compiled, so let's check the permissions related to the applicant API controller. Wait and see the magic. All permissions related to applicant's module have gone. What this means is that the entire applicant module can be accessed by all users regardless of their privileges, even if they are not authenticated at all. Now I'm going to undo the change to get back our authorize attribute. Notice that the applicant's module permissions have come back. As you can see, both API actions and their corresponding permissions have identical names. Now I guess you know the origins of these permissions and how they are generated. Blazorplate is smart enough to automatically generate all potential permissions you need in your business application. If you want to make specific endpoints publicly accessible to all users without restriction, you can simply decorate them with allow anonymous attribute. Now let's make the get applicant and get applicants endpoints publicly accessible. Decorating them with allow anonymous attribute will make their relevant permissions disappear from the permissions list. This means that all users, including anonymous users, can access these endpoints without any restrictions. As you can see, the get applicant and get applicants permissions are not listed anymore in the permissions list. We can get these permissions back by removing the allow anonymous attribute. Thank you for watching.